What's going on, Show Nation? It's Movie with Movie Gaming TV, and in today's video, I'm going to give you the best settings for MLB The Show 21. Now, I say these are the best settings. What do I mean by that? Any settings that you use, that's totally, totally fine. I'm going to give you my opinion what the best settings are to use for online competitive play. Now, these can help you out online. These can help you off offline. Maybe you'll find one thing in this video that you'd like to, to switch up and change. But basically what I'll do in this video is I'll explain all of the settings in the game. And then you can kind of pick which ones you want. You can copy mine. I have no problem with you doing that at all. And uh, let's just go ahead and get right into it. All right, so for the gameplay settings here, the first thing that you want to do is set a hitting difficulty to what you like. If you're new to the game, you know, maybe try it out on like veteran or rookie. That's a good spot to start. You can even go dynamic if you want to build. If you've been around the block for a while, obviously like Hall of Fame and Legend, these pit speeds are going to be faster and the PCI is going to be small. We'll get into what the PCI means here in a second once we get down to this part of it. Now the hitting view, um, I'm going to leave mine on Hall of Fame, by the way, for right now. It's just offline too. Hitting view, I'm going to go strike zone. Now strike zone to me is probably your least quote unquote aesthetically pleasing mode. But what it's going to do is it's going to make the icons within the game that kind of control how well you hit, control how well you see the ball. That's why strike zone is going to be the best. It's just, it's the best because you can see the PCI the best. You can see the ball the best. Almost every single player that's ever going to play esports or ever going to try to move up the rating boards, they're going to use Strike Zone. They might use Strike Zone 2 and they might use Strike Zone High. It's by far the best hitting view as far as results are concerned. Now, if you want to see the entire player, I would recommend using something like, uh, let's see here, like the Show 15, I think is pretty solid. Uh, I think also retro is pretty solid. So if you want to see the whole player, if you want that more aesthetically pleasing thing going on, you know, you're not worried about being the most competitive player of all time. Maybe try out the show 15 or try out retro. But if you're trying to like really, you know, you want these settings to compete online, you want to use strike zone, maybe strike zone two, that's a little bit more zoomed out and then strike zone high position strike zone just a little bit up. But I recommend strike zone. That's my personal favorite. Now, in play view offense, I like medium. You know, there's dynamic, there's also high, there's broadcasts, uh, there's retro. I personally recommend using medium. Now, why do I recommend that? I feel like it not only does it look good, but it plays good. So this is one of those things where it looks good and it plays good. Medium, you can see the players really well. So if you need to like get a ground ball, if you need to rob a, um, a home run at the wall, you can do that really well. You can see the players well from a, an aesthetic perspective. Uh, point of view too they just they look great from this perspective so the next thing that we're going to get into is the hitting interface now you're going to want to use zone for your hitting interface and i'm going to explain to you why there's two factors that control how well you hit the ball there's your timing and there's where you move the pci towards the baseball pci is basically like the aimer that you're going to aim with and you only have that aimer in zone if you use directional all you're doing is timing it and you're going to rely on the attributes of the card or the player that you're using. Same thing with analog, you know, directional, you're pretty much hitting X on the controller, pure analog. You're hitting the right stick on the controller. We want to control both. We want to move the PCI to the ball and then we want to hit X or whatever button to swing the bat at the same time. So we can, we minimize the RNG as much as possible. I would really recommend zone. I've got a lot of hitting tutorials on my channel throughout the years on zone hitting, how to not drop your PCI, but I really recommend using zone hitting and getting used to that. Obviously we're going to have the plate in the coverage indicator on. We want that on so we can see it to aim with it. Now these are the ones that I use for all this stuff. PCI center. I use the diamonds. I use the wedge. I don't use the outer. I use the spring green. You can choose whatever color that you want. The transparency I have at 100, you could go to, with 70, you could go with 40, 50, really up to you. The PCI fade out. So I fade out the inner and the outer. The reason I fade out the outer, even though I don't have it on, is because I, it's just, there's only so many options that you have in here. So I fade, fade uh, the inner and the outer. Now I keep the inner on with the wedge because I want to see kind of like where my PCI is, so to speak. Like how much my contact radius is within the PCI, but I want that to fade away to diamond. So I basically have like an aiming dot, 
you know, kind of think like an FPS or something like that. I just want that dot so I can try to put that dot on the ball to hit the ball when I'm aiming it. And if I have a lot of other stuff in the way, it's just kind of stuff that I don't need because I really want to square it up on that dot the best that I can. All right, let's talk about pitching. Now, pitching, again, whatever difficulty that you'd like. I'm going to go with pure analog to start off the year. There's a couple different uh, ones that you can do. I will have a pitching tips video on my channel. Uh, you can do pulse where it kind of goes in and out. Think like backyard baseball, and then you kind of select it, and you try to get it as the small circle possible. There's pinpoint pitching, which is new this year. There's a ton of competitive players that are going to use this. Personally, for me, I'm not going to use it quite yet because I'm not that good at it yet. But if you really, really want to get good at the game, master pinpoint pitching. It's going to allow you to be as accurate as possible. Meter, a lot of people use like, like to use meter. It's kind of like a golfing game where it goes up and then you try to hit it back on the line. Classic, you're not doing anything except for just hitting X and then just has all R and G with where the pitch is going to go. I like pure analog the most. I like moving it down to the line, back up to the hoop. That's what I personally like the most. That's what I'm going to go with for my setting. But this setting might be different for you. Pitch feedback, you're going to want to go with on. There's just no reason to have it off. Now, the pitching view, I'm actually going with fisheye. I practiced a lot of towards the end of MLB The Shell 20, and this is the one that I like the most. So this is the one that I'm going to roll with. There's tons of good ones in this game. In this one, strike zones, obviously really popular. It's the same as the hitting camera. It's very, very zoomed in. It lets you spot the pitches really well. Um, a lot of another really popular one to use is pitcher offset, pitcher center. Those are both really nice. Some people use outfield. What I would do is whatever pitching meter that you have, I think the best view, honestly, is finding a view where you can see the meter that you're going to use to pitch with, whether it's meter or analog or pinpoint, whatever interface that you're going to use, make sure you see that clearly. And what do I mean by that? Like, make sure that the scoreboard isn't in the, the plane of view. You want to just have a clear view of the interface that you're using. I personally like to use fisheye because I can kind of see around the entire infield from the catcher's uh from the catcher's point of view and i can also see generally i can see the actual uh meter the actual interface uh, the best pitch trail leave that on just might as well leave that on pitch confidence definitely leave that on no reason to turn that off uh pitch delay leave that on faster i mean it just speeds up everything in my opinion and then uh adaptive pitching just leave it on too sometimes the catcher will show you where to throw the throw the pitch if you're playing versus the computer or something like that Fielding, you're going to want button accuracy. There's also buttons. Um, I w wouldn't really recommend uh, pure analog, to be honest with you. I would use button accuracy. It's not that difficult. There's going to be a little bit of a, there's going to be a meter over the top of your player. All you got to do is release it in that, uh, that green window instead of the yellow to get an accurate throw. It's really easy to pick up. Green window is going to be bigger for better players that, you know, are better at fielding, but really go with button accuracy you should be able to get it in the green zone it won't take you very long at all to get used to it if you're not already and that and also keep the throwing meter on fielding a decision leave on assist throwing decision leave off in play view defense i would leave this as medium again that's just like the view that i personally like the most throw canceling leave on because if you ever need to cancel a throw all you do is double tap the button that of the base that you're throwing to and you can cancel a throw this can be really really valuable if you need to switch where you're going to throw based on where the runners are going one button dive and jump i recommend having this off uh, by default it's gonna have like r1 and r2 as your jump and your dive so you want to set it like that uh, i leave the auto infield and dive on for these reactions uh, you're still going to have to use this button more than you might think, but this will help you out on some like hard line drives or some diving plays that you need to get. Um, you're still going to, like I said, you're still going to have to hit the button to make some plays, but this can really uh, be beneficial and help you out. Might as well just leave it on. Uh, the catch position indicator, there's track ball, there's off. I'm going to go with drifting ball. It's just going to put a ball out there, and then you can just run to the baseball, and you'll be right under where you need to go to catch it. Defensive shift, I prefer manual. It starts on auto. I prefer manual because lots of times I'll either forget that the shift is on or 
I don't know. Some people leave it on auto, but I feel like a lot of people will be like late and hit it against your shift anyways and get a double off you on like a bad hit necessarily. So I just, I personally just leave it manual. If I ever want to shift, I can mostly the only shift I really make is bringing the infield in. I recommend manual and then off the wall ribbon, keep off the wall ribbon on. It's just going to show you where the ball is going to go after it hits off the fence. So it's really uh, nice to have that gameplay style. You can pick whatever you want. I have mine on competitive fielding aids. I'm definitely turning that on. I'm turning route the ball indicator on. I'm turning uh, base per play on as well. It's just going to show you where to throw the ball. It's going to show you what kind of route on this to take on a fly ball. Uh, catch position indicator accuracy. I'm going to leave that on perfect. Strike zone. I'm going to leave that on. Hot zones on. I like to turn the wind off. There's just no need for me to have it. Warm up relievers. I'm going to turn that off. Uh, dynamic difficulty. All this kind of stuff. I'm going to leave standard, standard, new level. Uh, the tutorials I have off. If you want to turn them on, you can turn them on. So that's everything in the gameplay. Now we're talking about presentation. Uh, presentation for me, I want fast mode. I don't really want all the cutscenes and all that stuff. Especially if I'm trying to grind or do something like that. I, I just, those aren't for me. You can choose whatever works the best for you. Uh, pitch selection cameras. I turn that to none. I don't, I like to, I like to just stay behind the catcher. So I, I don't like to have the, uh, pitch selection cameras ever pop up. If you're, this is one I really recommend that you turn to none. If you want a more, more immersive experience, turn it on, but I turn it to none. I think it's a lot better that way. Uh, batter walk up. You can have on the sideline reports, all that stuff. I leave on. I, I was just kind of like closed captioning. So I turn it on. Uh, audio and video now you can obviously select this to whatever you want i turn off the commentary the yells the pa the music all i really like to have on is the sound effects i turn off the crowd too because if i'm going to play for like a really long session really i just want to hear like the bat you know the sound of the ball hitting the mid it's just this is like a setting the way i have it set up it's just really a way that if I'm going to be playing for multiple hours at a time or streaming and stuff like that or recording videos, that's how I like to have it. Obviously, this stuff you can set up however you like. Uh, mode specific stuff. I'm going to leave my cross platform play on. Showtime opportunities on. Uh, player lock button mapping is classic. A lot of this stuff is going to be for your franchise. A lot of this stuff is going to be for your road to the show. For me personally, as a Diamond Dynasty player, uh, it's not uh, too important for me uh, right now. And uh, that's pretty much it. After you get the settings done, just go to save as default preset. Um, and then you can, uh, you're going to have them saved. So if you have any questions, I know we went through that kind of fast. I try to go through it somewhat fast so I could get the video to you in a quicker format for you. But if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them. If you see a question and you're looking in the comment section, you have a good answer. Don't hesitate to put a comment down there to help somebody out and help somebody in the community. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace out.